there, Soonlyweds. So we're back with part two of our Winter Q&A series. Last week we covered basic questions to ask no matter which vendor you're speaking with. But today's video is the first specific vendor that we're covering, and that's wedding planners. So as a wedding planner and event planner, I figured that I'd start with what I know and give you guys insight into some of the most helpful questions that I think you can ask potential wedding planners. The questions are geared towards not only making sure that you guys have a better understanding of your vendor, but also to provide your wedding planner with a better understanding of what's important to you and your partner. All right, so let's start off with the basics. So the first is obviously going to be, are you available on my wedding date? Now, this is important because you don't wanna waste their time or yours if they're not free on your chosen wedding date. Now, if your wedding date is still flexible, you guys haven't exactly committed, maybe you know a season and you're willing to wait, then of course ask for a few options so you can take them into consideration. But if someone tells you they're not available on their date, then go ahead and just move on. <laughs> So what sorts of services do you offer? Now, this is important to know because it kinda helps you understand how your wedding planner is going to be able to help you. Now, if they're a planner like myself, I offer three <laughs> different planning services. So the first is full service planning, then partial planning, month of coordination, a la carte planning, and so on. Now, those are the only services that I offer depending on the planner that you're speaking with. They will obviously have their own range, but like I said, it's important to ask because then you have an idea of how they can best help you as well as what the planning process is going to look like going forward. So now we have third question, and that is, do you handle professional services, contracts, and payment processing? So basically this is important to know because this kind of gives you an understanding of what your process is going to look like when you guys are looking for vendors. So are they going to be interviewing vendors that they think fit your vision? Are they going to be assessing whether or not they can fit within your budget? Are they going to be reviewing and negotiating contracts on your behalf as well as scheduling payments? Not all planners do this. It really depends on the type of planner you have and the type of service you're contracted to. So again, this leads us back to question number two. Ask, ask, ask about the service options you have available to you, and then ask some more guys so that you can try to figure out how to best handle your specific situation. Can you walk us through the process of selecting other vendors and how we would be involved? So each wedding planner has their own unique approach to this. Whether your planner has a preferred list of vendors that they always work with, whether they have a contact from previous events they've planned, or whether they're just doing cold reach outs because they think the vendor will really match with your vibe. It's totally different. Every planner has their own way of doing this. So please don't stress out too much about it, but just ask so that you can be informed about how you guys will be working together. And it'll give you a better idea of what to expect once it's time for you to begin reaching out to your various vendors that you'll need to help you build your day. How many meetings do you offer in this package and how often can we contact you? Depending on the planner that you guys decide to go with, this will vary greatly. Um, but for the most part, I would say um, in my experience at least, and remember, my experience is limited to my experience, but in my experience working with other planners, um, if you're doing like a full service type of planning deal or something like that, you will be having at the minimum monthly meetings. I know some planners also like to do bi-weekly meetings, but that's completely up to your planner, so please be sure to ask, as well as asking what's the nature of the video. Some people really like face-to-face -face meetings. Some planners prefer to do video calls. So just ask what you can expect so that again, you're aware you know. And another big thing about asking how often you can contact them. If you guys are a couple that you know you would like to like reach out as often as you can and that you would like help throughout every single portion of the planning process, communicate that to your planner so that they can be aware of what you guys are looking for and the level of dedication and communication that you are expecting. This way you guys avoid hurt feelings and everybody is on the same page before we're down to crucial times. How involved will we be in the planning process? So this is really important because no couple is the same, just like no planner is exactly the same. So depending on whether or not you would like to be included in every single decision, or if you're a couple that just wants to literally stand up at the altar, you've only made the big decisions, and for the most part, you're like, how the heck did I get here? That's important to know. 
So save yourself the headache and the freak out trying to figure out how often your client is going to contact you and just ask them. Ask them how involved they typically like their clients to be. Ask them what the process looks like and ask for specifically for examples of how you guys will be included in the planning process. Don't just take their word. Ask a little bit more questions if you're feeling unsure. Are you the coordinator who will be working our event? Now this is important to ask if you guys are speaking with a larger wedding planning team because some planners do have multiple coordinators and day of assistance, day of coordinators, things like that underneath them. So if you're speaking to someone at a large planning firm, be sure to ask if that if the coordinator that you're sp speaking with will be the specific coordinator on your actual wedding day. You don't want to build up a relationship with someone and just really feel like you've carved out a vibe that you guys get each other and you're expecting to work with them on your wedding day and then it turns out one of their assistant planners are coming and you're bummed about it. So ask, be upfront. If the answer is no, then it's no, but at least you know and you can make your decision accordingly. But hand in hand with that question is how many people on your staff will be at the wedding? Now, this can be really important to know in terms of vendor counts, meal counts, all those things, um, and just logistics in general. It gives you an idea of how many people you can expect on site, how many chairs you'll need. If it is going to be someone who is staying on site, I like to say more than like four to six hours, then yes, you do probably need to feed them a vendor meal. So that does mean your wedding planner and assistant, whoever else from their team is going to actually be on site on the big day. How many day of hours are included in your service? So this is helpful because not all planners actually show up to the day of. Your specific planner could just be someone who does the behind the scenes logistics, but they aren't a day of coordinator. In my specific case, I am a day of coordinator. No matter which package you guys decide to go with, I will be there on the actual site on your big day, helping you guys through like all the room flips, just all the day of drama that you guys should not be concerned about on your wedding day. I mean, being involved in that process means that you guys have to know how many day of hours are included in your package. If your planner only offers six hours of day of service, then you really need to be selective about what hours you would like them to be there. If you guys can handle setup on your own, awesome. If you would like them there to kick off the day, but you really feel like you can handle tear down and strike, then amazing. Do what works best for you, but ask these questions now so that you can make informed decisions instead of just trying to play catch up later on. What happens if you're sick or otherwise unable to be there on the day of our wedding? This is major because you never know. And as much as I like to say plan for the unexpected, there's only so much that you can plan for. So in the instance that your planner is sick on the day of, ask them how that process will work. Do they have somebody else that they contact who will show up and take their place without missing a beat? Will it be a backup planner from someone on their team? Their event assistant will take lead. Ask them what that process and procedure looks like so that you can have a backup plan and then a backup plan for your backup plan. But it's how do payments work, whether that be a percentage of our budget, is it a flat fee? Will there be any additional expenses on top of your base fee, be that travel, be that parking, food, whatever? ask now so that you guys can have a clear concise idea of what the process looks like if you're going to be hit with any unexpected fees or charges um and just be open and reasonable honestly guys these are all things that you have to have to consider when you're looking into getting an event coordinator or planner um especially if you're looking for them to travel outside of their region like it's completely reasonable for them to ask for travel and accommodations if you guys are having a destination wedding i would not be in xyz place without you guys and if that's something that you're uncomfortable about then that's something to note when you're talking to planners not when you're already committed and they're like hey you know I need you to book my flight and you're like why now into pricing this is also a crucial crucial part because as I'm sure you guys know weddings can be very expensive and if you don't manage your budget tightly and like be on top of everything down to the line item your budget can really get away from you so to manage that, I always advise couples to ask how do payments work? Is it based off of a percentage of our budget? Is it based off of our guest count? Is it a flat fee depending on which package we decide to go with? Is it a combination of all of these or others? Like guys, just ask so you can find out how that actual structure is built. You can find out like, okay, like I'm comfortable going with her if she doesn't do an hourly price. But if she does hourly and then we go like over 60 or so, what does that start to look like? Versus a planner who only has a flat fee like myself. Um, if you're doing XYZ package, this is the price. 
and then you know from there it's no surprises now not all planners use the same methods to come up with their prices and i will say giving a client a specific price is very dependent on the details of their specific celebration so guys just ask how they work as when they're due and all that stuff you guys should have no problems open honest communication <laughs> are there travel fees associated with our location this comes down to, again, like what we just talked about of destination celebrations, um, events that require more than one day where their planner just might feel more comfortable staying on site rather than going to the site to then come back home to then go back to the site, all those sorts of things that just require a lot of logistics, transportation, moving around. Just ask guys. <laughs> How much are additional hours? So this really comes down to and gets important when you're dealing with a planner that has an hourly rate because for some instances once you do reach that hourly rate then it does become like a per hour fee and if that's not something that you're comfortable with again that's something you need to know before you're actually committed so that you can make an informed decision so believe me guys it's way easier to ask than it is to try to like have to solve a solution afterwards. I feel like oftentimes a lot of my couples are kind of hesitant to ask their vendors things when we're working together. And I'm like, guys, this is your opportunity. This tells you everything that you need to know about this vendor. So please ask. You don't want to find out anything last minute and be hit with a surprise just because you were too shy to ask up front. As to be honest, you guys are spending a lot of money, this hefty investment into yourselves, into your day, into your marriage. Just be upfront and ask anything, ask questions and dive deep guys lastly take time to reflect on your interaction with each of your potential wedding vendors you'll be spending a significant amount of time with them with all of your vendors but especially your planner so it's crucial that you actually like them as a person and that you respect them as a professional so after you guys have your first meeting i like to advise my clients just to sit back get your own separate sheets of paper for each of you and just ask yourself some questions like do we like their personality? Do we like their style? Do we feel heard and understood by them? When we ask them for ideas, were the things that they said back to us indicative of them hearing our preferences and what we would like and reflective of our style? Just think about your interaction as a whole. How was their conversation, their tone of voice? It's crucial to me that you guys like your wedding vendors. You spend so much time with them. And like I know I already said, no one more so than your wedding planner. So guys, please make sure that you like them. I don't want you dipping and dodging their calls because you don't want to talk or just being hesitant to reach out. You guys honestly have a wedding question. There's no need. So if you answer yes to all the questions, then get to booking them. But if not, you should probably continue your search. To recap on what we covered last week, booking someone you don't feel comfortable with is a setup for unnecessary stress and a headache. So find someone who understands you, your vibe, and so that you can enjoy your wedding planning, enjoy your wedding day, instead of dreading talking to your vendors. That is it for us today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please go ahead and subscribe because we have a lot more good content coming to you. Uh, this is only part two in our vendor Q&A series. And of course, just to recap, this is wedding vendors. But let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions about your specific wedding or event. I'm more than happy to make a video explaining as best as I can to try to help you guys out. So feel free to let me know what you guys would like to see more of and know more about in the comments. I am still building my course as I mentioned to you guys last video. Um, so please let me know in the comments what you would like to see, what I can answer for you, and what would be the most beneficial for you to know throughout your wedding planning process. That is it guys. Leave us a comment, leave us a like, and I'll see you guys next time. Later!